I'm going to go through how to do gas stoichiometry two different ways. One is if we have an ideal gas, we can use the fact that PV equals nRT. Secondly, if our ideal gas is at 273 Kelvin or 0 degrees Celsius and 1 atm, which could also be 760 millimeters of mercury, every gas is going to equal the same volume, which is 22.4 liters. So let's get started with the steps that are involved. There are typically three steps involved with gas stoichiometry. Step one has to always be first, which is to write the balanced equation, and it must contain one or more gaseous substances as reactants or products. Steps two and three could be in either order. So let's just say this is first. You're going to calculate the moles of a substance, and then you're going to use the mole ratio off of the balanced equation to calculate the moles of another substance. The third step, which these two could be flipped, is you're going to use the ideal gas law and solve for the moles or the volume at a specific temperature and pressure. If you're at STP, you could use that molar volume of one mole of any gas equals 22.4. But if you're not, the ideal gas law is always your best route. So on to our problem. What if we had 9.29 grams of lithium reacted with excess water and it produced hydrogen gas at a temperature of 27 degrees and 1 atm? I'll solve for the molar volume at STP after, so we can compare the difference. So first, I wrote the reaction already. It's a single replacement reaction where hydrogen is being replaced by lithium, so it turns into lithium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. I cannot use the PV equals NRT equation or the molar volume at STP for a solution, a liquid, or a solid. Make sure you never use an ideal gas law for something that's not a gas. All right, so the first step is let's just write down all our given. The mass of lithium was 9.29. Then we have the temperature is 27 degrees, and you'll see that I labeled it for hydrogen because, again, if I'm going to use PV equals NRT, it has to be for the substance that's a gas. Next, I do not know the moles. I'm going to put a question mark there. I do know I'm at 1 atm. And at this point is where you can really see that right now we have two different question marks. I don't know the volume and I also don't know the moles. So it's not a good time to use PV equals NRT, even if you know that we're gonna use this version of R because we don't have all the variables to solve for just the one that you're missing, okay? So we're gonna to need to take this mass of lithium and turn it into a moles of lithium then use the mole ratio to find how much lithium can turn into hydrogen gas. And then we can use that mole amount of hydrogen gas to put into here to solve for our volume. Grab a periodic table because it's time to do some molar mass calculations. If we have 9.29 grams of lithium, we're gonna divide it by the molar mass of lithium, which is 6.941 grams of lithium for every one mole. If I were to stop at this point, I would have over a mole of lithium because I have nine divided by about seven. But I don't want to do that because I would like to know how much hydrogen I can you know, create from using all the lithium, having it completely react in excess water. So I'm gonna continue with my stoichiometry conversion and I'm gonna use the mole ratio at this point. Remember that was one of the main steps we needed to calculate um, for stoichiometry calculations that are gas law. So it was this step right here. So for every two moles of lithium, I will create one mole of hydrogen gas. So at this point, we're gonna to need to stop. We actually have solved for one of the missing variables here that we need to use for PV equals NRT, and it's this one. So grab your calculator. Unless you can do this kind of math in your head. So 9.29 divided by 6.4, oops, 6.941. Make sure your button pressing is correct. And then I'm going to hit equals. So there's my mole amount. So it's about one and a third. And then I'm going to uh, multiply that by one and then divide by two. So I'm just going to divide by two. So there's my mole amount right there which was 0.6692, I'm gonna keep one extra sig fig, so 0.6692 moles. I really should only keep three, 
but I'm going to keep uh, an extra one to carry it through the calculations. So that means up here, this isn't a question mark anymore. This is something that we now know that it is 0.6692 moles of hydrogen that we will be able to create by using up all that lithium. All right, so on to the next step, which is going to be doing the ideal gas law calculation. So here we go. You want to take PV equals NRT, and you want to isolate for the V. So you're going to divide both sides by P. I'm just going to use this color to cross off. Okay. So then you have a new equation where volume is going to equal moles times R times T divided by P. So moles times the gas law constant times the temperature and then divided by the pressure. Now, if I want to use this version of R, there are many versions of R. This is just the most common one. I have to have liters, ATM, mole, and Kelvin. I do not have um, Kelvin. I have Celsius. So I have to add 273. You can always do 273.15 also, but I'm going to keep it at that. And then we get uh, 300 Kelvin for a temperature. We do have ATM, and I kept that one ATM on purpose for the next calculation. And we're solving for that our volume will be in liters. So you can put your units down, and then you can double check that you're ready to go. So off we go to the volume calculation. Our moles is 0.6692 moles. And then my R is 0 0.0821 liters ATM, all divided by mole and Kelvin. And then times, hopefully I can just fit this just barely on here, 300 Kelvin. And you're going to divide this all by the 1 ATM. So again, grab your calculator, but I would actually make sure that your units all cancel. The moles will cancel, the Kelvins will cancel, the ATM here in the, in the, you know, in the numerator here would also cancel. So we do have liters as a surviving unit per se after we're done doing the calculations. So we should get an answer here in liters. I actually recommend always putting your unit first. So I've got that number already in there, so I'm going to multiply that by 0.0821. I'm going to check my button pressing here times 300, and then divided by one, which is the same answer, so 16.4, you know, eight, and then three, but we can't keep that. Um, I had three significant figures here, three here. This would actually give me also three. In fact, I could have carried an extra zero if I wanted to there, but in the end, I can only keep three significant figures, because remember, these are measurements you had in lab, so that's why we can only report our answer to these same number of significant figures. So there is your volume for your hydrogen, number, unit, and I'll even add label. Remember, hydrogen is diatomic, so if you would have wrote this balanced equation with that not being H2, it would have caused all of this to have uh, massive errors way at, you know, beginning to the end. All right, on to the second type of way we're going to prove what the volume is if it's at STP. I'd like you to make a prediction right now. Do you think that when we go to zero degrees Celsius and we keep it at one ATM, I'd like you to make a prediction. Will the volume go up or will it go down? On to the second way to calculate gas stoichiometry problems. If you have STP, then one mole of any gas equals 22.4 liters. Again, only at zero degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin and one ATM. So one mole equals 22.4 liters and I can use it as a conversion. So grab your periodic table because we're moving on back to molar mass. Next, you have lithium, which is 6.941 grams for every one mole. So I've already done the first step of this problem. And then we still need to use the mole ratio off the balanced equation. So for every two moles of lithium, I'm going to create one mole of that diatomic hydrogen. So for every two moles of lithium, I get one mole of hydrogen. And again, the goal here is to cross out your units, you know, so you're going to cancel your units along the way. And then we're almost done. Because of this fact, I can use one of these, and in this case, I'm going to use that because I need the moles on the bottom. And that equals 22.4 liters, again, at 0 and 273 and 1 ATM. Um, so what we're going to do then is you can even label that hydrogen because that's our specific gas for our problem. So if you grab your calculator, 
You're going to take 9.29 divided by 6.941, and then I'm going to hit equal. So there's our mole amount, 1.33, and then we're going to divide by 2 and multiply by 1. So then there's my moles of hydrogen, just like I had in the last problem, and then multiply that by 22.4 liters. You can see this is a nice, very convenient shortcut, and you get 14.990, but we can't keep all that, and this again is in liters. So it's going to be 14 um, and if you round up, we can't even do that. So if you're going to round this up, you're actually going to end up getting not 14 point something, you're going to get 15 uh, right on the dot. And then we'll keep three sig figs. We'll add a trailing zero for our final answer. So that's our volume of hydrogen. Now, remember, I wanted you to make a prediction from the volume that it was before. Remember that when we did this using PV equals NRT at 27 degrees, we had 16.5. So does that make sense knowing your gas laws that if we have a higher temperature, we have a higher volume. And if we have a lower temperature, we have a lower volume. That's Charles law. All right. Well, hopefully I showed you some ways to do gas stoichiometry calculations and you're capable of doing some on your own. Good luck, chemists.